Yeah, thanks, Cal. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, you want to obviously start off with expressing our thoughts and prayers here on 9-11 to those that we lost tragically on that uh, horrific day, not only in New York, obviously in Pennsylvania and in the Pentagon. Um, you know, we, we've all been touched by that one way or another, and uh, it's something I, d I just addressed with the squad as we wrapped up practice, making sure we keep everything in perspective, unfortunately, on this, on this day. Uh, also, I uh, want to lift up our thoughts to those that have defended our freedom uh, in light of that tragedy and those that have made the ultimate sacrifice, obviously, to them and their families, but also to those that are still out there protecting our liberties and our freedoms. We greatly appreciate and lift them up in everything that we think about and do. That's why we obviously had Heroes Day last week uh, in front of 9-11, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with all those. Looking back at the game, changing gears, our Offensive Player of the Week was Flynn Nagel. Thought Flynn played outstanding, and Jeremy Larkin was our big playmaker. Defensively, Joe Gaziano was very active, uh, made made a bunch of uh, bunch of plays. We did not have a big playmaker, and that's pretty indicative of the day for our defense. We needed to make some plays, and didn't have that happen. I thought Riley Lee's had showed great courage, was our special teams practice player of the week. Braden Heald uh, on offense, Cam Ruiz and Jack Tremonia on special teams were uh, our three practice players of the week and uh, fired up for those guys that gave a great look. This week coming up, uh, you know, pretty big weekend for us as a, as a university and a program uh, with having uh, our uh, NU Hall of Fame uh, weekend. We're fired up that Zach Streif uh, is representing the football program uh, and, and being inducted into Northwestern Athletics Hall of Fame Friday night. You know, retired from the Saints after an amazing 12-year career, 2009 Super Bowl champion, three-time all Big Ten selection while he was here and, and a Football Writers Association first team All American. Um, you know, he was the first O lineman to garner that in 22 years when he received that. Uh, obviously, he's got a great gig. He's now obviously doing the radio for the Saints and very thankful that Zach could take the time to come up and be a part of a very special event on Friday. So, uh, with that, how about some questions? Uh, Coach, we didn't see any of Jalen Brown or Solomon Vault the second straight week uh, in that game. Any update on them, how they're doing? Uh, no update. Okay. And then uh, receiving-wise, uh, try to go over the top a couple times, three, four times. Weren't able to connect on any of those. What are you seeing uh, in those misconnections? Is the receivers not not gaining space, or what is it? Uh, they're 50-50 balls, and we went over. I mean, they had, they had space. We just didn't complete them. You know? So I like our aggressiveness. we got to take shots. You can play man-free. we got to take shots. And just kind of need a one to change momentum, and it, it didn't happen. So... Um, no, I think our guys had you know pretty good separation on most of those routes. Actually, we just didn't make the plays. I think we had our hands on over half of them and didn't come down with the ball. So I would say we got to finish better. A couple were overthrown, but uh, we got to we got to take the top off the defense. And I like our aggressiveness, and we just got to complete those. We're not going to stop. Vitz, Vitz, um, can you update us on on Blake or Rashawn? Yeah, they're uh, you know both were active today out out there, but I would probably list them as questionable for the game. And can you explain when when two guys like that go out of the offensive line? Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about the Jekyll Hyde character of it mm -hmm. on Saturday. How does that affect the cohesion of the guys working together? And was that a problem on? Yeah, on no, no, no. Our, our problem was fundamental. Our problem was execution of fundamental. Um, guys are going to go down. You know. I, you, how about a great life lesson learned in the, in the bowl game when your quarterback goes down? The next guy's got to step up. Um, you know, we've had guys throughout. I mean, we had 2D tackles out, and I heard everybody felt like the sky was falling outside of our building, and the guys that went in kicked ass. So uh, it's your job to step up and go play. And when your number gets called, you need to be prepared. And when you don't go out there and play well, you hurt yourself, you hurt your unit, you hurt the team, and that's what happened on Saturday. But I don't want to discredit Duke. I thought they played very well, especially up front. So uh, it was a combination of both. We didn't play very well, and and uh, and obviously they played well. So it's kind of a perfect storm. But yeah, obviously, anytime you have personnel changes, it hurts cohesiveness. But there's no excuses. Go play. No excuses. I did, but I lost it. I'm sorry. We'll come back to you. Uh, none. We didn't make any adjustments. We just executed. We had better eyes. Um, you know, those those plays were given up. You know, Greg sat on the route. He can't do that. His eyes were on two too long. Montre let a guy get inside of him. They did a nice little job schematically, but we should win on that play. And then obviously the touchdown throw. We got bad eyes at safety, and we gave up a touchdown. So it's not real complicated. 
got to get get our eyes better, and that's you know one of the biggest things we talk about from day one in the secondary about our eye control. And if you don't have it, you're not you're you're not going to be able to execute. And so we expect Akron to do the same thing. You know, you show that you show that on tape. You are what you show on tape, and so we'll we'll work our tails off as coaches to get that fixed because it's going to come up again. I'll up on the offensive line yeah. for a minute. Well, you talk again on Saturday about some of the young guys having that deer in the headlight look. Yep. Was that part of the, the problem of the young guys who went in for the tackle? Uh, I mean, like like I said, I'm, I'm not here to present excuses. I'm here to present solutions. And so the solutions are you got we got to coach better to get guys to execute fundamentally better. And they've got to be prepared mentally and emotionally when they go into the moment. So it's kind of twofold. It's on both of us. It's on us as coaches and on them. Um, and my hope is after a week of practice, if they get an opportunity to play, that they're better. And if the other guys go out and play, then those guys, through that experience, will be better the next time they get an opportunity. So we'll see how things progress throughout the week. Um, last year, Bennett was sort of the, the number one receiver, Flynn, and number two. It seems like so far this year, Clayton is favoring Flynn more. Is there a reason for that, or is it just more that he's getting open? I think he was open. No. No, I don't. Looking forward to Akron. What have you seen in them? Uh, what sort of the? Well, unfortunately, only one tape from this year, right? A ton of off-season study. Um, you know, Coach Bowden and his staff. He's been there seven years, but he's you know got 104, 172 career wins as a head football coach. That speaks for itself. Um, and I'm really impressed with what his staff is doing schematically in all three phases. They've recruited well. They won their divisional championship last year. Competed in their in their conference championship. Obviously, it didn't go the way they wanted. They had to play a road bowl game against a team in their home stadium, which is tough. And they look great against Morgan State. You know, Cato Nelson, I think, since he's solidified himself as their quarterback, really serves the drink for what they're trying to get done offensively. He's a dual threat guy that makes a lot of really good decisions. Uh, really impressed with him on tape um, throughout the whole course of last year. And then, obviously, um, uh, against uh, Morgan. Uh, Jamal, Ad Jamal Davis jumps out to me on tape on defense, number nine. He is explosive. He's athletic. He's got great twitch. He's, I think he's an outstanding football player. Uh, and then their just entire front seven, I think, is really, really active. Uh, Forty, Laco jumps out to me, uh, and, and so does Ulysses Gilbert on, on, at linebacker. Those guys are active, active, active. And their secondary is really, really solid. Davis and, and George uh, jump off a of tape. So, you know, you don't win a divisional – crowned by accident. You win it because you're well coached, you got great talent, and you, and you go out and win games. I think they went 6-2 and two in the MAC last year. Uh, and and uh, it shows. It shows. They're fundamentally outstanding. Schematically got great schemes. They adjust well in game. They've got playmakers across the board. It's going to be a huge challenge for us. There's no doubt. To go back to Duke for a second, I ended up getting Jeremy Larkin 21 carries and 56 total passing attempts. Was the plan to have more runs in the game kind of flowed the other way? Or? You're down two scores, right? I mean, it changes, obviously, what you got to do and how you got to do things. So, um, you know, we got to do whatever we got to try to do to win. You're across the 55 times and don't get any points. I mean, you, you, you can't expect to win a lot of games against a good football team doing that. You can't expect to win a lot of games when you get first and goal and you don't get points. So, you got a lot of work to do. You know, that's, that's, that's obvious. And the guys did a good job today. They came, they came to work. Their attitude was great, and they responded pretty well. So. My hope is that they'll do it again tomorrow. Pat, a year ago, uh, Patty Fisher was pretty much unknown. And now, obviously, he's known. Are teams scheming him different, doing things to, to, to neutralize him? And then how do you go about countering that? Uh, after two games, I would say no. Um, we've seen two primarily RPO teams, run pass option teams. A lot of times um, he's no, – not a lot, but enough times he's the, the option. He's who they're reading. So if he plays in the box, they throw it outside. If he's out of the box, they run it inside. That's just the schematics of the plays. Um, but he's been really active. I don't know what he's been given credit for, but we had him for double-digit tackles on Saturday. I thought he was all over the field. I think he missed one tackle. Um, but I think he's been really active. But, I know I, I don't think we've seen a major sy systemic schematic shift from what we saw a year ago explain to people your linebackers are your three leading tacklers and mm -hmm. it's the, the job of the defensive line to keep them clean and then it's their job to make the tackles in simplest terms well again especially last week against duke i mean i think almost every first down pass play was an rpo 
So, um, you know, our defensive line has got to be able to play certain things uh, schematically, and I thought they did a really good job of that. I thought those young D, D tackles really stepped up and played hard and played well. And, um, you know, again, then here comes the run fits that have to be done properly with what we're trying to get accomplished. But, no, I, all, all 11 of our guys on defense are expected to make plays. Coach, would you have made any changes to decisions that you made on fourth down, or are you happy with the statistical choices there? Um, which ones are you talking about specifically? Specifically down 21-7 on the goal line. More, do you truly look at that as a, just a statistical choice, or do you take some feel into account there? Yeah, it's both. I mean, we're down two scores, right? So if I kick a field goal, we're still down two scores. So uh, we needed to make momentum. A momentum play. We got first and goal. Um, you know, in the charts that I use, I think fourth and three was a go. Fourth and four was coach's option. We needed to make a play. Um, we obviously didn't protect very well, and uh, Clayton was under duress. Credit Duke. So that one, uh, no, I, I would do that again. I would just like to score. And then the other ones, you're just trying to make plays. Again, you have a couple of different ways to hopefully seize momentum. Number one is to make plays, right? Uh, if we make plays, then really a lot of those decisions really don't matter what I do. Uh, when we're scuffling and not necessarily executing and making plays, and sometimes I've got to do some things, be it in the kick game or in decision makings that I make on O or D, along with the, our coordinators, to try to seize momentum. And obviously, it didn't work out. But uh, no, I'd do it again. Why are people hating on me for it? Well, no doubt. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. We go four for four. I'm a genius. You know, I mean, that's that's the way it goes. You know. It's, it's what you sign up for. So, But, no, I mean, I'm, I'm going to use the numbers to be a guiding light, but then i gotta, I got to see the flow of the game. I mean, the Astros do the same thing, right, in baseball. They do a lot of analytical stuff, but then you got to feel the flow of the game. How are things going? How's momentum at the time? You know, I think Ryan Field was waiting to erupt if we just would have made one play momentum-wise offensively. And when you go 0 for and a half, uh, I don't blame our fans for not cheering. You know, I would, I would feel the same way. Fans note, normally this would be the freshman welcome, Wildcat welcome game. There'd be like 2,000 freshmen there. Yeah. The way the schedule works this year, also not going to be st any students at this game. Is that something you think about at all? Do you think that will have any impact sort of for the first two home games rather than just the first one, not really having a lot of Yeah, support? you know, obviously I would love to have them there. They're awesome, and we just can't thank them enough for their support when they come out. Um, you know, I, I, can, I don't have enough time in the day to worry about things out of my control. So that's an out of my control type of deal. Um, they can still come. I mean, it's a party. Six thirty Saturday, so feel free to come in early. I mean, I, I don't know if I was a student, I'd leave home early. <laughs> I wouldn't st be sticking around home. I'd come to college, party my rear end off. But I was playing, so that's what I would do. So a couple questions ago, you mentioned about how you guys had Patty for double digit tackles and uh, ESPN at least gave him 12, but they gave Blake Gallagher 13 cool. and nine solo. So what were you what were you impressed with, with Gallagher's performance? Uh, yeah, he was at the point of attack a little bit more, um, you know, with where they were running their, their boundary run game. Uh, I think I think Blake was much better in game two than he was in game one. I thought he, he had more poise. You know, at linebacker, a lot of things that Coach McGargle and myself teach uh, were, were very much aligned. Obviously, he and I spent a lot of quality time together. But a linebacker sometimes wants to rush his reads, where we talk more about don't rush your read, rush your reaction. And I thought in the opener, I thought, I thought Galley was a little bit, a little bit too aggressive at times, and and uh, it hurt us a little bit with the depth of our defense and some of the RPO game. I thought uh, Saturday, I thought he was much better, you know, and that just that comes with experience, it comes with time, and I, I thought his growth week one to week two was outstanding. You mentioned these RPO teams key on Patty as the option man. They can. Yeah. They can key on. Sure. Is that, what, is that what Duke did? Did they, did they kind of exploit that matchup? Oh, no, it's not an exploitation of a matchup. It's, it's more that's just the scheme. You know, sometimes a quarterback will read a, a, a D lineman for the run pass option. Sometimes they'll read the second level, I mean, a linebacker, or safety, how they fit and where the schematics are. So it just depends on who you play and what type of RPO they're running, if that makes sense. I mean, if you really watch the game, you'll see the quarterback's eyes and where he's looking, right? And so if the Mike linebacker drops out, he's going to hand the ball off. If the Mike linebacker sits in the box, he's going to throw the ball, whatever their prescribed route concept is. So uh, that's one way the RPO. Again, the other way is maybe a defensive end or some people even a defensive tackle. That's pretty rare these days. 
It's more on the outside on the defensive end because it's a little bit more of a clear and consistent read. Or sometimes a safety when he comes down to the second level, those guys will read that. Talking about fourth downs, uh, did you watch the Bears game on Sunday? I did. What did you think about the decision to kick the field goal on fourth down for? Yeah, well, I'm never going to second guess a, another coach because I don't know what all was going into the flow of the game. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I, I think you got to do what you think is best, and you know, I think the. Thought 52 earned his keep, man. That was pretty, pretty sick. We were going, we were, we were breaking down Akron and getting ready for the game, and we couldn't stop but uh, go cheering crazy. So, but I was fired up for Dino, fired up for obviously Tyler to get the win for those guys as former Wildcats and Mark Murphy, but uh, shot in the face as a Bear fan. So it's tough. On the RPO thing, you faced so many RPO teams last year, and then. First two opponents this year. Have you made any adjustments in sort of the scheme to defend them as you mm -hmm. face more and more opponents? Yep. Uh, Not going to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, if you line up the same way every time, you know, you you, you can't you can't do that. So you got to have answers, and, and we have answers. I think everybody does. You know, I, I think you look at all those things hard. The good news is, is our offense runs the same thing, so we get a lot of reps at it. You know, both sides. So it's not anything new or foreign to us, but it puts a lot of pressure on you. It's it's like defending option without the quarterback running, right? They're optioning the, the whoever they're reading, and instead of running it, they're throwing it. So it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. I think it's illegal, to be quite honest with you. I mean, when linemen are downfield and you're throwing the ball, I, I don't quite understand how that's still football, but that's the way the rules are set up today. So that's what you got to do. They're supposed to get three yards, and then you look at plays on tape, and guys are downfield four yards, just. It's just part of the game. It, you see it at every level. You see it at high school, college, and, and pros. So I'd like to see them go back to actually making offenses play honest, where if you come downfield, it's a penalty at all. You know, So maybe someday I'll get on the rules committee and get that fixed, but I doubt that'll happen. So until then, we're going to take full advantage of the schematic rules allowed to run RPOs. So, But it's not football. It's not football. Coach, several Wildcats were in action this weekend, and Austin Carr got a start. Is that something you really take pride in? I know you say you don't really think about stuff that's out of your control, yeah. but is that something you really take pride in? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're so fired up for those guys on Sunday and what they're doing. You know, um, I think Dino had a sack. You know, again, it's at the Bears' expense, which is like a double-edged sword for me, but blood's thicker than water, I guess you'd say, right? No, we're so proud of all of our guys. Uh, and, and what they're doing, and especially the way some of our guys have had to make it to get in the league. You know, you think of, of I mean, we had an unbelievable honorary captain in Corbin Bryant last last week, and, you know, Corb is a guy who goes undrafted, free agent, and ends up playing in the league seven-plus years. You know, that's, that's, that's perseverance. And uh, all the guys that are playing right now, we're so proud of them. And, um, you know, I get an update basically every Monday morning on how they all did and, and, and where things are at. But what I'm most proud of is when I hear when the scouts come through and I ask all the scouts about how they did in training camp and even our guys that maybe didn't make a squad, they're all representing the program the right way. They've got a great attitude. They're competing. They're working their tails off. And, uh, hey, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But we're incredibly proud of all those guys who represent the purple and white on Sunday. Leah, you're not prejudiced at all on the whole RPO thing since you played defense and you're now ragging on offensive linemen, guys like me. I mean, yeah, it's communism. I mean, it, I mean, it's a pure, RPO is a purest form of communism. I mean, I don't understand how offensive linemen can be downfield. I know. Well, I know. Well, it used to be when you and I played, when you tripped and fell down, it was an illegal man downfield. Now, if you're just an uncovered lineman and you go 2.3 yards, it's not a penalty. But if you go three, it is. And nobody can see it till after the ball's thrown. So, again, it's the rules. You can, you can, you can complain all you want. I mean, if I want to get it fixed, I guess I can beg to get on the rules committee. But uh, it's, it's the most in vogue change, I think, in football that if you're a purist of football, it's not the game. It's not. I mean, met, people downfield blocking and the ball being thrown should be illegal. But as a defensive head coach with defense in my background, we will absolutely 100% take full advantage within the frameworks of the rules that are given to us. So RPO forever. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't you be? I mean, why wouldn't you be? It, 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 Lyman, go down the field, and we're going to throw it, and they won't call it. So why not? It's awesome. Communism. It's great. It hasn't worked yet. Eventually we'll get it fixed. All right, go Cats. Peace out. Thanks.